All right, so the next lesson is on uh, conic sections all right, or graphs of conics. OK, so there are <clears throat> different types of conics. OK, so the way conics are created, and these are the different types, parabola, circle, ellipse, and hyperbola. Uh, the way conics are created is um, basically you have this kind of, in the red here, this is a double cone, and then you'll have a plane or a sheet that kind of intersects it. So depending on the angle that it intersects the double cones, it'll create these uh, four different uh, conic types of conics. Okay, so the first one here, kind of visualize, <clears throat> if you see the sheet intersecting the cone on an angle, um, what it'll do is it'll create a parabola. Now, if the sheet is horizontal, uh, perf perfectly horizontal, it'll create a circle. Okay, so as this thing goes up and down. Now, it could possibly, um, again, intersect it on an angle, but include the whole shape which will create an ellipse. And then if it was vertical, right, if the sheet is vertical, what it'll do is it'll create a hyperbola, right, where it intersect in these, um, these two places. So it'll create kind of like a double prob parabola. All right, so these are the different types of uh, conics. Now there's also a 3D animation uh, illustrating conics as well. So I've included this link, this uh, YouTube video. Um, so, Basically, what we're going to be doing, and I'll, I'll click on this in a second here, but basically, just to kind of give you a preview, is basically we're going to be given graphs of conic sections, and we're going to be graphing it onto a grid. Right? So that will create parabolas, uh, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. All right, so this thing here, I'll just do I'll just open this up here. Um, And we'll go quickly through this ad. All right, so yeah, so this is the 3D animation. Just kind of gives you an idea of um, maybe a better picture of exactly what what um, what conics are. Um, so yeah, and they go through how to create the double cones. I think here, yeah. So it creates the double cones as well. As you scroll through here, I'm just going to go really quick. Here's and you can watch it on your own time. It's about a yeah five minute video. Um, so it kind of explains how. Uh, each one of those different conics are created. All right, cool. So that is that. So let's go back to here and just kind of get into it here. All right, so the first type of um, conic section is something you've already been working through or you have worked through uh, quite a bit, uh, last year in pre-calc level, and these are parabolas. Okay, so, um, so this is actually basically should be re review. Um, so this, um, Probably is in vertex form. And so what I'm going to do here is just kind of quickly go through this one. All right, so we can see that the vertex. Oops, pen's not picking up here. My, uh, the vertex here is at positive one, positive four. We know it opens up. And we have a vertical expansion by a factor of two. All right, so putting this all together, all right, I start at my vertex, which is at one, four, right there. And it opens up and has a vertical expansion by two. So if I go over one, I should go up two. And if I go left one, I go up two, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna use these three points to illustrate it. So our parabola here is gonna look like something like that. All right, now the thing about uh, conic sections too is that um, uh, rather than having just y equals, we can also have x equals and we can have the y in the variable. So basically here, uh, what I've done here is I switched the y and the x in this one to the new example here. Uh, so the x, so the x and the y have been switched. So the X and the Y, you'll notice, have been switched. All right, everything is, else here is is the same. All right, so um, so if you recall back to the first unit, this whenever the X and Ys are switched, uh, basically what's happening is you're taking the inverse, right? So rather than having a vertex of one four, in this case for the second one, our vertex is going to be at four one. And instead of opening up. It's going to open to the right, okay? Because when it comes to x and y, uh, the right 
set the, uh, the direction to the right is in the positive direction. And we also have a horizontal expansion. Uh, by a factor of two. All right, so basically what this is describing is this parabola with the X and Y coordinates um, switched, all right, or flip-flopped. So, um, so here, my vertex here is at 4, 1, and it's going to open to the right, and it has a horizontal expansion by two, so as I go up one, I'm going to go right two. If I go down one, I go right two. All right, so this is going to be the graph. Oops, that's not the one. So this would be the graph of the parabola in this case here. All right, so your X and your Y values are, are switched, okay. Uh, now, yeah, so uh, just be aware of that, okay, so when it comes to conic sections, uh, you may be dealing with uh, up and down parabolas, where it's Y equals and the X is being squared, or you may be having sideways parabolas, right, where the X and the Y are squared, so the or X and Y switch so that the Y variable is squared. Okay, so if the X is this, um, is uh, not squared, but the Y is, then it's going to be a sideways parabola. Okay. And I just, yeah, and I quickly did these here by uh, switching my X and Y values. All right, so that should hopefully have been a bit of review, a little bit of a twist, I guess, with the uh, inverse, but um, still, you guys have been working through parabolas in the past quite extensively. All right, now what's probably going to be new are the next, the other two, all right? So the next one here I'm going to describe are ellipses, or I'm going to go through ellipses. Um, so this is what they call the um, standard form of the, all right, so this is uh, what they call the standard form, all right? When uh, it's the standard formula for uh, for conic sections in general, so ellipses and hyperbolas, um, as well as um, parabolas, I guess. Um, so let me do, um, kind of explain here uh, that um, so the H and K will be what they call the center. Um, A and B are the stretch factors of the ellipse, and um, if A is equal to B, so if they're stretched equally. Um, vertically and horizontally, then the ellipse will actually is a circle. Okay, so uh, ellipses actually, maybe if you don't, not quite aware what an ellipse is. Ellipses are um, oops. ellipses are basically um, round objects. Okay, I don't know if that sounds. So ellipse might look like that. I know it wasn't drawn very well. Ellipse can go this way, All right? But basically, if the horizontal and vertical stretch factors are equal, then what you do, what you'll end up getting is a circle. Okay, so that's what this is saying. If A is equal to B, then you'll get a, a circle, All right? Um, so the key thing about ellipses is that in the equation, it's separated by a plus sign. So whenever the two, um, whenever the X and the Y are separated by a plus sign, then it is going to be an ellipse. Um, whereas, and I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit further, for hyperbolas, you know, notice that we have the same kind of format. However, instead of being separated by a plus sign, they're separated by a minus sign. Okay, so this is what happens. When this occurs, then it creates hyperbolas, which I'll go into more detail later in this uh, lesson. All right, so let's just go back to this one here. Um, so again, this, this, these two here are separated by a plus sign. All right, so I'm going to use this as an example. All right, so uh, we're going to graph um, this equation, this ellipse. All right, again, it's an ellipse because it's a plus sign. And uh, so I'm going to step you, uh, walk you through it step by step. All right, <laughs> so the first thing I want to do here is I want to figure out what the center of, where the center of the ellipse is. Okay, so the center is, and again, inside the brackets, this takes into account the shifts. All right, so we're going to go left one. Uh, up to right, so it's always opposite. So the center here is going to be at negative one. My pen is deciding to click off from time to time. So um, negative one and positive two. Okay, so that's the center. Um, I'm also going to list off a. Okay, so a is going to equal. So 25 is a squared. So I'm going to write that here. 
a squared equals 25, which implies that a is going to equal the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so I kind of, yeah, wrote this out quite extensively. All right, so basically, if this number here is 25, then a is 5, right, the square root of that number. And likewise, b, b is going to equal um, the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay, so b is equal to 4. And you'll see how this affects our graph. All right, so now we actually have all the information we need to graph this uh, ellipse. Okay, so I'm going to start at negative 1, 2, which is right there. And then, so A is basically my, um, how can I call it, the, the horizontal, uh, I'll call it length, I guess, from the center. All right, and um, let me spell length this way, length. All right, whereas B is the vertical length. All right, so what I mean by that is, uh, so since A is 5 from the, from the center, I'm going to count left 5, which will take me to negative 6. Okay, so it'll take me to negative 6. I'm also going to go right 5, so that'll take me to positive 4. Okay, so the distance from the center, I'm going to go 5 to the left and then 5 to the right. Now, when it comes to vertical, I'm going to go up four, okay, because that's my um, vertical one. So from the center, I go up four. One, two, three, four. And I'm also going to go down four. Okay, so these four points along the outside are actually on the ellipse. Uh, this middle point here, the center is not, obviously, because it's, it's an ellipse. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of draw in the rest of it. So it should look something like that so that i had to freehand uh eh, it's not too bad actually but um so once you get those four points you just kind of draw a circle so what you notice here is that yeah so this is from here to here this is distance a from there to there that's distance b all right so again a was five and b it was four now the beauty of actually having um using this as with uh, on this laptop here is what I'm going to do now is just simply going to copy this onto Desmos and just show you um, for that I'm going to need a keyboard um, I'm just going to show you that how the um, how the lips is going to look all right should be the same so just give me one sec here paste that all right so let's just zoom this in All right, so here's the ellipse that was created. Um, I wonder if I can, yeah, actually, this isn't bad. Um, okay, so if I was to compare it here, um, actually, let's just plot the center. So the center was at negative, negative one. Two. You can see that here. This center is in the middle of this ellipse. Uh, the horizontal length here is five. Is five from the center both ways. The vertical length is four right, in the Desmos, so up four and down four. Okay, so this is this uh, graph on Desmos, which I use the equation to graph, is exactly the same as this one that I kind of freehanded. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to be using Desmos again for the for the next one here, which are hyperbolas. Right. Oh, actually, sorry. One more thing I want to point out is that yeah, notice that if a and b are equal, right? So if I had 25 there and 25 there. Well, then my um, my horizontal length will be equal my vertical lengths, which will actually create a circle because right? it will be the same distance around all the way. OK, so again, that's that was that part there. So circles are like special cases of ellipse, all right, where A is equal to B. All right, um, cool. All right, now the third type of conics are called hyperbolas. And these are perhaps the kind of like the trickiest ones to graph or to kind of get your head wrapped around. So I'm just going to kind of do my best here to fully explain how to graph these hyperbolas. All right. So there are actually two types of hyperbolas. Um, notice here that, well, the first thing here is that instead of being separated by a plus sign, right, notice that they are all hyperbolas, they are separated by a minus sign. Okay, so if it was a plus sign, it'd be an ellipse. 
But if it's a minus sign, then if they're separated by a minus sign, then it is going to be a hyperbola. All right, so hyperbolas are, you can kind of refer to them as um, kind of like double parabolas. Okay, now the difference between these two and the reason that they're two different types is notice that this one here it has is equal to one, this one here is equal to negative one. All right, so the difference here is that when it's equal to positive one, what we're going to have here is what they call a, or what I call actually, I'm not sure if they call it, but this is called a vertical hyperbola. Okay, so uh, which means that your two, uh, sorry, vertical hyperbola, yes, which means that your two kind of sections will go up and down. Right? Whereas if it's minus one, this is called a, or this is what I call a horizontal hyperbola. And then your two sections will go sideways, all right, left and right. Okay, so when we graph it. Okay, so, um, um, yeah, so everything else is kind of the same in terms of steps. It's just kind of like the end step where we actually draw it in. Uh, the, my, the positive one and the negative one will tell us uh, where to draw it in. All right, so uh, this will be a little bit clearer, more clear actually when I go through an example. All right, now the other thing I need to um, add in are the slopes of the asymptotes, which are going to be plus and minus B over A. Okay, so whatever these numbers here are, um, it's going to be those who will indicate the slopes of the asymptotes. Okay, so this will uh, this part here will actually be a lot clearer once once I go through an example. All right, and I'm actually going to do two of these examples. All right, so um, so yeah, let's just kind of jump straight into it. All right, all right. So just like um, just like uh, ellipses, right? Uh, hyperbolas also have centers. All right, so in this case, the center is at the point positive three, positive four. Okay, so again, it's the opposite signs of the numbers inside the um, brackets, okay, because the brackets themselves indicate the shift, all right, left, right, up, and down, all right, so we're going to go right three, up four. Okay, so there I'm just going to plot three, four, which is right there. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to find the slopes of the asymptotes. Okay, so hyperbolas have asymptotes. Um, all right, so slopes of asymptotes. And, sorry, that's equals. All right, so it's fairly straightforward. All right, it's going to be positive and negative. Again, it's B over A. So in this case, uh, it's going to be plus or minus uh, 4 over 5. Okay, since um since b is equal to right down here uh b is going to equal uh four because that's the square root of 16 and a is equal to five okay uh, which is the square root of 25. okay so if i go four over five that should give me the slopes of the asymptotes all right so what that means is from the point from the center i'm going to draw in uh two lines all right one line will have a slope of positive four over five and the other line will have a slope of negative four over five. All right, so let's start with a positive four over five. So from the center, I'm going to go up four, one, two, four, and over five. Okay, so that'll take me there. And um, I'm going to go down four and left five. Should take me to there. All right, so yeah, so these points look like they're going to line up. And rather than, since they're asymptotes, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, fill them in with a dotted line. Okay, so I'm just kind of freehanding it, sketching it, but um, okay, so that would be one of the lines. The other line is the negative slope. All right, so if I go down four, I'm gonna go right five to there, up four, left five to there. Okay, so, um, and again, I'm gonna draw in dotted lines, right, because these are asymptotes, okay. Now, um, this is where, uh, so once I've drawn out in the asymptotes, I want to look at the right-hand side and see whether it's a positive one or a negative one. All right, so since it is a um, positive one, this means that we're going to create a vertical hyperbola. All right, so, um, so in that case, um, 
what we're going to do here is is from the center. I'm going to go up. Um, I'm going to go up four units. Because that's B. To there, so it will always line up like, with the. Um, with the with the, the points of your actually sorry one sec it's a carbon i think i might just give me one sec guys i just want to jump ahead all right um post this into my desmos um okay yeah that's what i thought i had it backwards all right guys please forgive me uh, let's jump back here. Uh, uh, sorry, when it's positive one. Yeah, that's right. I thought I had it backwards. All right, sorry about that, guys. Really confusing you. Uh, I had it backwards. Okay, so um, let's try that again. All right, so when it's positive one, they're actually going to have a horizontal. Where is it going? <laughs> it doesn't want me to type it. What is happening here? Um, horizontal. All right, so if it's pause one, it's horizontal, so it's this way. Whereas if it's minus one, it's vertical. Okay, so I had them backwards. Uh, please forgive me. All right, so. Um, yeah, so I had those two backwards. So it's pause one, it's hor horizontal, it's negative one, it's vertical. Um, so in this case, this is going to be a horizontal hyperbola. All right, so which means it's got to go in this direction. So my mistake, um, we're actually not going to plot this point here. All right, so since it's a horizontal hyperbola uh, from the center, I'm going to go right a units right to there and left a units to there okay because it's horizontal um so um yeah so in this case again um these points here when you plotted the asymptotes right when you counted uh since you go like up b and over a um the distance over here will should line up if that makes sense so you notice the red dot lines up with the with the green ones on both sides all right so last thing i want to do here is graph Right, this uh, hyperbola. So what you're going to do here is from here, you're just going to draw a graph and l allow it to uh, approach the asymptotes, but it's not going to cross. So it looks something like this on this side. And over here, you might do something like this as well. Okay, so they're not going to cross the asymptotes. All right, so let's just kind of confirm this with Desmos, and I'm going to have to be... A little bit careful here, just kind of playing around. All right, so just to confirm it, um, let's go back here. Okay, so I did punch this in. Um, no, we're not having a great picture of that, so let's zoom out. All right, so we found the center too. Um, okay, so the center was at three, four, so let me just plot that one in. And our slopes are asymptotes for four over five. Okay, so um, three, four. Okay, so that's the center. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw in some lines here. So y equals uh, four over five x, right? Because that was some, and actually I want this line to kind of go through the, um, the center here that we plotted. So let's go plus one point. Maybe. All right, that's close, but I don't think that's quite it. So let's go 1.6. All right, so that looks that looks actually pretty good. All right, so this red line here um, is the asymptote, and likewise, y equals negative four over five. Right, the x that was the slope of that one, and I'm going to have to shift this one up. Looks like about six. Actually, 6.4. Okay, so the How you uh, there you go. All right, so let's make these dotted and red or dashed. Dash looks better. All right, like was this one? Is it dashed? All right, okay. So the red dashed lines are the asymptotes, 
I plotted the center, all right, also plotted the hyperbola itself, which is in purple, all right. So if I uh, make this, uh, yeah, this little room, um, what you'll notice here is the, oh, just a little bit more, yeah. So what you notice here is that the hyperbolas, right, do approach these asymptotes, but they will never cross them. So if I zoom out a little bit more, it just goes right along them, okay. So that's what hyperbolas are, all right. So, um, so steps and plot the hyperbolas. You're gonna plot the center. You're gonna plot the asymptotes. Then you um, find the. These are called vertices, actually. Okay, so these two points are vertices, and then uh, sketch in the, the curve. All right. Cool. All right. So, um, so let me just actually use my pen here. Okay. So. All right, so again, this point here and this point here, these are called a vertex. And again, this point here is the center. All right. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, this is a long video. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do one more here. All right. Now, uh, this one here uh, requires kind of a kind of a initial step. Kind of a trick. All right, so notice that this thing here is is equal to negative 36, right? It's not e equal to negative one. Uh, we can see that it is a hyperbola because the two, the x and the y, the squares are being um, separated by a negative sign. All right, so the first step here, algebraically, what we need to do is actually just divide through by, um, actually, not negative 36, but 36. All right, so divide everything by 36. So this reduces to one. Now over on this side, what you'll notice is that reduces to one over nine. Okay, so it's X minus one squared over nine minus Y plus three squared over 36 equals negative one. Okay, so yeah, so algebraically, sometimes you're gonna have to do this low conversion, right? And just set, make the right-hand side equal to one or negative one by dividing through by that number. All right, so from here, we should be able to graph this. Um, let me use a new screen here. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna notice here is that the center, the center itself is at, um, is at positive one, negative three. All right, so the center, center is at one negative three. I'm going to write the slopes of the asymptotes is equal to, um, all right, so A is equal to three, B is equal to six. Three and six, yeah. All right, so therefore, so the slopes are going to be six over three, which is equal to two. Okay, so and actually, sorry, plus and minus, plus and minus. Okay, so I can draw on the asymptotes right now. Um, the other thing I want to take into account is since it's equal to negative one, right, since it's equal to negative one, sorry, my pen is, it's like for some reason right now, it does click off. Um, okay, so since it's equal to negative one, uh, this is a, a vertical hyperbola. So it's going to open up and down. Okay. All right. So let's just piece all that together. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is plot the uh, center here. So center is at one negative three. So one negative three, which is right there. I want to draw in my two asymptotes. So my asymptotes have a slope of positive two and negative two. All right. So here, as I go over up two, I'm going to go over one, up two, over one, and so on. You can go down two, left one down to left one and so on okay so this would be one of the asymptotes uh likewise um the negative negative two so down to right one down to right one 
up to left one, so on. All right, so that will create this asymptote here. All right, so those are my two asymptotes. Uh, next up, I want to plot my vertices. So let me just use a different color here. So I'll draw this. I'll draw the parabola itself in at in with red. All right, so uh, this is a vertical hyperbola. All right, so it's going to fill up here and down there to figure out the distance. Um, again, uh, this time. Uh, uh, this time my um, vertical distance is six, right? So B is equal to six. So from the center here, I'm going to go up six. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six to there. Also, I'm going to go down six. Three, four, five, six. Which is down. Okay, so I guess I'm a little bit off the grid. All right, so if I was to draw it in now, it's going to approach those asymptotes, but it's not going to cross. All right, so it's maybe something like that. All right, so that would be that hyperbola. So, yeah, so it's hopefully fairly simple. Now, what I'm also going to do here is somehow. I want to uh, copy and paste this. Uh, this thing fly. Okay, so I'm just going to post this into Desmos. Just clear this. Right? All right, so. Uh, I believe there's a four here though. All right, so um, okay, so there is the hyperbola. Now, just to make it a little bit clearer, let's also plot the uh, center, which was uh, one negative three. All right, and also going to draw in the asymptotes. All right, so uh, the asymptotes had a slope of two, I believe, two plus or minus two. Yeah, okay, so y equals two x. All right, so then that looks like it's going to go through negative five, so minus five. And then the other one here, y equals negative two x. And this one should go through negative one. So those should be my asymptotes. Now let me just uh, change the color to red and make them dashed. Dashed, all right. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can kind of see that it does actually add up. Right, my, oh, actually, you know what? Let's plot the vertices as well. All right, so here I think the vertices is, a, is one negative nine. And yeah, and the other one there was at one positive three. All right, so the vertices, yeah, the vertices I plotted here too. And you can see that's where it is. You can see the asymptotes, the red lines are going through the center there. And if so, as I zoom out, you can see that the green line approaches. So the graphs approach the asymptotes, but will never cross. All right, cool. So this is the, um, I guess, the di digital uh, graph of the uh, that example. Right? But it all checks out. All right, so this is these are the steps. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, conic sections. Um, I actually threw quite a bit at you in this lesson. Um, but um, yeah, so that is so if again, um, these are the types of conics. Um, and again, this YouTube um, animation kind of illustrates this thing if you're kind of interested in watching that. All right, guys, cool. So that's that's conics. Ciao.